So there has been a 26% increase in the number of hate crimes recorded by police in England and Wales. The figures show that in the 12-month period up to March this year, more than 155,000 hate crimes were recorded by the 43 police forces in England and Wales. 70% of the crimes were racially motivated. But are we really facing an epidemic in hate crimes? To discuss these figures and look at the broader issue, I'm joined by the deputy editor of Spiked, Fraser Myers. So, it seems that every year we get these reports that say uh, hate crimes are on the, on the rise. Every single year this is, this is happening, right? Every single year the report will say crime is on the rise and it will usually be a huge gap. Like, t you know, 26% yeah. is a huge jump. So these figures sound very scary. Um, it would sound like hatefulness is on the rise. But when you dig a bit, bit down deeper into it, it's, it's clear that this isn't true. There isn't really a rise in hate know crime this? at all. Because there are several different methods for um, essentially recording hate crime. Um, this particular method, the police recorded version, goes up every year, almost uncontrollably. Whereas there's another version called the Crime Survey for England and Wales. And that has shown pretty consistently that hate crime has been falling. It's fallen by about 40% in the past 10 years. And actually, that's what you'd expect, because Britain is becoming a more tolerant country. You know, we're certainly not more racist, more homophobic uh, this year. We're not, are we 25% more racist this year than we were yeah. last year? I mean, it's an absurdity. So these statistics really are the consequence of changes in the recording method. And police forces are essentially encouraged to go out and find, you know, instances of hate crime. Well, Everyone is encouraged to come forward and report hate crime well, we've a lot seen more this, than other crimes. We've seen this on Twitter a lot, where police mm. say, you know, if, if someone has said something offensive to you or upsetting to you, then please get in touch. Yeah. So it's that kind of trawling. But also, you know, it's, it seems as though the criteria for what qualifies as a hate crime has changed so that it's all about the perception of, of, a, of a victim rather than a complainant. That's right. In terms of what is actually recorded by the police, it should be the, it's, it's something is hateful if it's hateful according to perception of the victim or any other person. So any right. other person could decide that an incident was hateful and then it could be recorded in the figures. That works slightly differently when you're, you know, charging someone or when you're putting someone in prison for a hate crime. Yes. But in terms of the police recording, it's all about perception. What is the incentive for these changes? When, when did this all start? So it really kicks off in 2014 when the College of Policing, who <coughs> train uh, police officers, changed their guidance to put in this uh, rule about perception. But they also suggested that it would be a failure if the police are recording less hate crime. Essentially, that should not be the goal of the police. Was that explicitly very, stated? It, it was explicitly stated that there should not be targets at reducing hate crime figures, which is bizarre. So they want hate crimes to They want to rise. be able to record hate crimes because they believe that there's this hidden epidemic, that people were not coming forward, and now, finally, you know, the truth is, is, is being revealed. Now, re in reality, what's happened is that um, people are being encouraged to come forward. As you suggest, the police are not only, you know, advertising the fact that you should report hate crime on social media... They're going around in vans. You may have seen this van in the Wirral um, a couple of years ago that said, being offensive is an offence. You know, telling people to report nasty tweets to them. Yes. Um, and it's not even clear that a nasty tweet is necessarily a crime, which is... But you know, why? Confusing. What is the incentive here? Because, you know, there are still hateful crimes yeah. going on, right? So we need to have an accurate sense of where, how, how much that's actually happening, don't we? I think there is just this broader prejudice in the police, you know, in... You know, I guess you could say, among the establishment that Britain really is a hateful country. And so they see, even though it's clearly the statistics make no sense, they see this as a reflection of fact. And, of, you know, they see it as a reflection of all the hard work they're doing. But all of the studies hate. show that Britain is one of the least racist countries in the world. Well, exactly. You know, that's why, that's why it's so at odds with, you know, most people's experience of the world. That's why these statistics are, are so absurd. And this year it's been, uh, they're saying that the particular leap is, a, is transgender hate crime. Yeah. And yet when you dig down into the actual uh, stats and the attacks on trans people, mm. very, very rare. It's, it's incredibly rare. And in fact, uh, Channel 4, of, of all people, strikingly, once did a sort of fact-checking on transgender hate crime. And they realised that actually if you're, you're statistically less likely to be attacked as a trans person than the average person. So the idea that, you know, trans people are facing all this targeting and, and um, you know, violent crime is, is not quite accurate. So when it comes to the College of Policing, so they introduced all this in 2014. Yeah. And they also introduced this idea of rep recording non-crime. Can you tell us a bit about that? So this is, so a non-crime hate, hate incident is even more surreal because where a hate crime can be hateful based on the perception of someone, you can have a non-crime incident that's not even a crime. So this right. is where you're really talking about the most minute events, you know, people having arguments um, with neighbours and things like that, or, 
There have been hate crimes or non-crime hate incidents recorded where someone has beeped someone in a car aggressively. There's been people campaigning for Brexit who have been reported for non-crime hate incidents. So even political there's opinions, a, yeah. right. There's been, there's been suspicious dog poos on the neighbour's lawn and, someone's, and that, those have been reported as non-crime And they go into the incidents. stats of hate? Well, they're not supposed to, but it has been shown that some police officers are putting them into the stats. And non-crime hate incidents were found to be unlawful by the High Court in the recent case of Harry Miller and the Home Office instructed the College of Policing to stop doing it, and it seems like they haven't. They haven't. It, it carries on. So the, the, the College of Policing have updated their guidance to say that, you know, you shouldn't pursue cases that are irrational, um, that police officers should have a bit more wits about them in terms of what they record. But the fact is that many of the actions that have been taken, you're right, that, you know, last year Priti Patel said that all non-crime hate incidents should be wiped from people's records. Yes. But people were still finding, you know, if they did an enhanced DBS check, that they would have a non-crime hate incident. But that's the problem, isn't it? Their name. That there are consequences. If you're there applying for a job, a teacher or something, maybe yep. working with children, and a DBS check comes, a disclosure and barring service check, yep. comes up with a non-crime hate incident, well, maybe the employer won't hire you. Exactly. And you might not even know that you have this incident logged against your name. Right. You know, and let's, let's also step back a bit. The, the College of Policing is a quango. It's a private limited company, and yes. it, it essentially just drew up this quasi-law out of nothing, out of its new guidance for police officers. So how did it get away with that? And how did it get away ignoring the judiciary in the Home Office? I think that the pressure on, um, from within the police and from, with, from within the you know, civil service, from within our, within our institutions, is to you know, constantly push in a more kind of woke, politically correct direction. And so it does mean that they end up ignoring the courts, ignoring politicians, ignoring even some, a lot of um, high-ranking police officers think a lot of this stuff is silly and it's got to be um, contained. But that's anti-democratic. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, right. so, what, so what do we do about it? I mean, isn't there a case for just shutting down the College of Policing? That's what I'd do. <laughs> that, that could be one solution. I think that we need to raise awareness of the fact that hate crime is not what people think it is. So you yeah. might imagine a kind of uh, violent attack, the kind of thing that we would all uh, deplore. But often it is, you know, really a question of spats on Facebook. Yeah, uh, offensive jokes. Offensive kind of jokes. Thing. And you can, you can see that the, the recording of it is actually very bad, but you can see at least 50% uh, of the hate crimes are so-called public order offences. Even many of the ones that are tagged as violent on the police's um, database actually happened online. So are they really violent? I, I, that's a... but, but, but even if there's a violent crime, why should the uh, private feelings of the person who committed the crime come into account? Why not just apply the law on the basis of the crime committed? I think that's right. I think that, you know, the idea of hate crime takes us down this slippery slope to thought control. Mm. You know, a crime is, is surely evil regardless of what, is, what is the person is thinking in their head at the time they commit it. Yeah, very interesting. OK, well, Fraser Myers, thanks for joining me tonight. Sarah.